Till now we have seen a couple of different data types inside Elixir. Now if you are not feeling confident, don't worry, we will have more practice as we progress with the tutorials. But right now let us go with the flow. I simply wanted to introduce you a couple of topics before we can dive much deeper into them. The next topic is all about your flow control. Inside Elixir for creating loops, we would normally use recursion. But other than recursion, we have a couple of different mechanisms for our flow control. So let's have a look at the first flow control mechanism called as a case. Let us create a simple list. So we can say that the list is going to be one, two and three. Now what we can do is we can create a case statement. So this case statement acts more like your switch statement. So let me create the statement and then I can show you how it works. So here we can say that we want to create a case and let me put the end block. Now here we can say that we simply want to fetch the second element from our list. So remember the second element from our list would be three. So this is at index number zero, one and two. So we can say that we want to fetch from the list the second element. And after that, depending on the result of this statement, we can pattern match on a couple of different cases. So let us create the first case inside of this one. So here we can say that in case this statement evaluates to a one, at that time, we simply want to return back a string and the string would be this one print. Next, we can also create multiple cases. So in case we get the answer as three back, at that time, we simply want to return three is a match. And the next one is a catch all case. And for that, we can say that we want to use an underscore. That means we are not interested in the value. But in case we don't have a match for the return of this statement, at that time, we simply want to return a string called as catch all. Now let us try and evaluate this one. And as you can see, we get the answer as three is a match. So let us try and reiterate what happened. So we have created a case statement and we simply want to pattern match on the result of this expression right over here. So this statement evaluates to a three. And since we get a match, that's why we get the return as three is a match. We can use this case statement to pattern match on almost anything. So for example, suppose we have a structure. So let us create a module. So we can say we want to create a module for post. And inside this, let us create a structure and let us create the different fields. Suppose we want to have a field for the ID and we want to initialize to nil and then we want one more field for the title. Let us initialize to a blank string. The next one could be for the description and we can again assign it to a blank string. The last one could be for an author. Again, let us assign a blank string. So we have created a struct. Next, let us create a post. So we can say that we want to create a post one and we want to have a post. Suppose uh, the ID is one, the title could be title number one. The next we want the author. Suppose the author is Julius Caesar. And let us try and evaluate this cell. And as you must have noticed, we are not giving the description inside the struct. But while defining, we have defined that in case we don't have the value of description, at that time, we simply want to initialize it to be a blank string. And that's why we are getting a blank string right over here. Next, we can use the case statement for our post. And suppose we want to pattern match on the author. So we can say that we want to have a case statement and we want to pattern match for our post number one. And here, let us define a couple of different scenarios. Now remember that since this is a struct, we can also use the map notation for our pattern matching. So here we can say that suppose we have an author and in case the author name is Octalium, then we simply want to return a string got a post from Octalium. Let me copy and paste. 
Suppose the author name is Anil Kulkarni. So we can say got post from Anil Kulkarni. Next, we can also create a catch all block. So we can use the underscore and this time we can create a string and we can say got a post from and we can use the string interpolation. So we can say post one dot author and let us try and evaluate. So this time we get the answer as got a post from Julius Caesar. Now just as a small reminder, we can easily update the struct as you would update a map. So in case we want to update the author field from Julius Caesar to my name. So we can say that we want to update the author to become Anil Kulkarni and let us try to evaluate. And this time we have the new author Anil Kulkarni. Now let me create a new code block and let me just copy and paste the case statement right over here and let us try to evaluate. Oh, so this time we are still getting the answer as Julius Caesar and that's because we are not rebinding over here. So we can say we want to rebind the variable of post number one to the updated value. So let me reevaluate and this also let us try to reevaluate. And this time we get the right answer back. Similar to the case statement, we have another flow control mechanism by the name of condition. So let me create a new code block over here. And this is going to be for the condition. And here we can define a couple of different conditions to pattern match on. Now the condition statement does not take an expression right over here. Instead, we can pattern match for the different conditions right over here. So suppose the first condition that we want to match would be for the post author. And suppose if you want to say that in case the author is Octalium, at that time, we simply want to return a string back saying that editing a post from Octalium. Let me copy and paste this one. And this time let us check for the condition of Anil Kulkarni. And this also becomes Anil Kulkarni. Next, let us also define the catch all block for the condition. Now for defining the catch all block, we simply pattern match on the true condition. And we can say that in case we have a true condition, then we simply want to return a string saying that this is a catch all. Now let us try to evaluate this cell and we get back the answer as editing a post from Anil Kulkarni. Let us have a look at one more condition block. So let me create a new block right over here. We can also use this condition statement for more advanced pattern matching. So example, we have a list right over here. And, uh, and suppose we want to pattern match on the first element. So at that time, what we can do is we can simply use the head function. So we can say that we want to extract the head from our list. And in case the head is one at that time, we want to return a message saying that got a one and let us define the catch all block. So this time we can use a string interpolation and we can say head is and then we can put the head right over here. So let us invoke the function of head on the list and let us try to evaluate this block and we get the answer as got a one. So as you can see, we can use all of the different pattern matching techniques for condition as well as case. The last flow control mechanism is the if and else block. But normally you will not have to work with the if and else block. We would use recursion or pattern matching instead of using if and else. But let me show you how we can use the if and else block if required. So let me create a new section this section is for the if and else and let us create a new code block so the if and else condition is pretty much the same so we can say if true then uh, we want to print out this will work else we want to print out else this will work and let us try to evaluate this cell and we get the answer as this will work well that's it for all of the different types of flow control mechanisms inside elixir well, till now we had a very short introduction to the different data types and flow control mechanisms inside Elixir. From the next video, we will start working with a mixed project. And at that time, we will learn all of these concepts in much more details.